Okay, I'm going to get into today's message because uh, I'm going to hurry and not hurry. Amen. <clears throat> So I want to review. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and preach to you at least one more time, maybe seven or eight more times on this topic. Why did I get saved? Part three. Why did I get saved? Part three. Last week's review was this. We, you know, the last couple of weeks, we talked about what to do with the time between you getting saved and when you die, this thing called our lives. What do you do? What's the big deal? You got saved. What do we do next? Okay. And so I have a little book in my office that when people get saved, I give it to them and it says, what's next? It's just a little answers a few questions. What's next? So maybe we need to get that little book and read it. What's next? What do we do now? There's uh, about 6,000 verses that deal in the Bible that deal with you getting saved, but before you get to heaven. About 6,000 verses that deal with how you're supposed to live on earth after you get saved. That's quite a few. So if you're wondering, then, uh, did you get skipped over? It's in there. You just hadn't read it enough. Amen? It's in there. There's four things that we need to work on after we get saved. This is still a review. There's four things. Now, I phase one because everybody's in phase one, phase two, phase three, all that stuff right now with the reopening and shutting down and then reopening. But phase one is this. It's a personal thing. Eric, it's personal. It's a personal thing that, number one, and we found our text from a couple of weeks ago, Romans 6, 12 through 13. Do not let sin reign in your body. When you get saved, that ought to stop. Sin shouldn't control what you do. That's a good point, Pastor. Amen. Number two, don't allow your body to be used as instruments of unrighteousness. Well, how do you do that? Quit letting sin reign in your body. Because if sin reigns, you're going to do the unrighteousness. Can I get an amen every now and then? Just let, let me know that we are still in a, a Pentecostal, charismatic kind of full gospel kind of church. Amen. I like somebody clapped. Amen. Number three, act like you're alive and not dead. Christ called you to live. You were dead to sin. He wants you to live. He wants you to be alive. He wants you to be excited. I've never wanted to go do anything with somebody who was a sourpuss. Want to go over and go fishing with me? I don't think so. But if you're going to, you want to go fishing, man, there's a great hole over there. Crop your bite and let's go. I don't even own a fishing pole. Let's go. Kind of same thing with God, right? Church stuff. Amen. Number four, allow your body, yourself, your life, after being saved to you die, allow your body to be used as instruments of righteousness. You've got to do some righteous things. If you get saved, you should... Quit doing unrighteous things and start doing some righteous things. Well, what are righteous things? This book's got about 6,000 verses in there <laughs> pertaining to righteousness. Lots of things. Amen? We'll talk about that in the next few weeks. Here's what I love. I was reading this morning. This is not in your text, Sabrina, because I put it in afterwards. But it so spoke to me. I just, want, I just couldn't keep from adding it, so I added it this morning. In Psalms 27, verse 4, this is what the Bible says. One thing I have desired of the Lord... That's key. you got to desire something of the Lord. He says, one thing that I have desired of the Lord that I will seek. Watch this. Here's what it is. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I don't know about you, but that got me plum excited. You mean after I get saved, I ought to want to come to church? Amen, that's what it said. You mean I ought to want to come and inquire and get knowledge and, and be filled with the things of God? Amen, that's exactly what that's saying. And he says, how long do I do it? All the days of my life till I leave and exit this place. That's what Psalms 27, 4 says. Same thing we've been preaching, amen? Isn't that something? Preaching right out of the Bible. You know, you don't need seven things or 12 things on what to do and how to make your life better. You don't need a self-help book. You don't need 101 things of, of what God is to you. You know what you need to know? That God loves you and get in His Word. and You read His Word and everything you need is in that Word. I ain't against these books, don't get me wrong. I'm just telling you, get in this book. Get right. Amen. All right, watch this. Phase two. This is a last week's part. In phase two, there should be a visible difference in what fruit you are producing compared to pre-conversion. I loved it as much as you love it. I can tell you right now, when I got this message, it was just as real to me as it is to you. You ought to have different fruit 
after you get saved than you do before you get saved. If you've got the same fruit, maybe you didn't get saved. Maybe you went through a ritualistic prayer, but you're, you didn't really believe, you didn't, you didn't give everything to God. I'm not judging you, I'm just saying the Bible teaches there's going to be some different fruit once you get saved. So you can, if I had a list that I could put a list of things up here and the things you used to do before you got saved and the things you're doing now after you got saved, if, if you can still connect the dots, there's a problem in your walk with Christ. Come on. Why you say that, Pastor? Because the Bible says you'll be known by your fruit. I got that squash plant at my house. It's still dead. I ain't picked it up, pulled it, done anything with it. I can inspect the fruit and tell you it's dead. You know why? Because there ain't no fruit there. It's dead. But I can look over at them pepper plants and think, my Lord, them, they're, they're doing good. They're everywhere. Why? Because it's alive. Okay, number one, here's what we're going to do. So our fruit should be different. Our fruit should look like this once you get saved. You ought to be winning souls. Remember I talked about the ministry of reconciliation last week? Still applies this week. Christ was that minister, died on the cross so that, that, that he could reconcile people to him. And he says, and I've given you that ministry. It's our job to win souls. Okay, number two was conduct business for the kingdom. Remember the story of the parable of the minnows or the talents? Not minnows. Some of you weren't here last week, and I had to clarify my southern lingo or dialect. I said minnows, and everybody says, we're going fishing? No. <laughs> M-I-N-A-S, minnows, the talents, okay? So uh, the story of the talents and what he did, he gave them so many talents, and he went away. It's a metaphor of Christ going away, and he says, come back. And what happened? He had some that had increased in one had one mena, mena, not meno, mena, talent, and he gave it back to him. You know, the problem was that he didn't lose it. The problem was he didn't do anything with it. So you got to be busy about kingdom business while you're here. After you get saved, till you get to heaven, you got to be busy about kingdom business. That's part of fruit. Come on, that's part of new fruit. Part of new fruit. All right, <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to get into today's uh, message for the next few minutes. I am trying to review this because I've been doing some study. You learn best when we review several times. That's why you know the country song that says you're going to leave your, you're going to leave your husband or you're going to leave your wife and you're going to go get drunk and you're going to get run over by a train. <laughs> you know why you know that song? Because you listen to it over and over. They play it once every hour. Do you know that in radio that they play the song, same song about basically the same time every hour? And you know that song because you listen to it umpteen times a day. Amen. Act like y'all ain't got any country radio stations that your truck or car picks up. Oh, I'm so anointed that my truck, mine don't even pick up that. It's that new Greek word, baloney. So, what is kingdom business? Look, I'm going to get busy here. What does kingdom business look like? If I'm to be busy about kingdom business, Bryce, what does that look like? So, have you ever had to... Come up with an answer to a question. You, you really didn't know the answer, but you knew what it wasn't. You knew what something wasn't, so you had to do reason, uh, deductive reasoning to get to an answer. In other words, you had to eliminate some things. You said, I'm really not sure. I did that quite often on test when I was in school. Well, I know it's not that. I know it's not that. It's got to be that. Amen. Uh, so let's do a little uh, deductive reasoning, uh, which, which simply means you may not know the answer, but you know what it's not. So let's look at what kingdom business is not real quick. This is what kingdom business is not. Are you ready? Do we have, do we have seat belts in here? Because you're going to need them. I, ew, I didn't like this. This is what kingdom business is not. And you find, if you have your Bibles, James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. This is what kingdom business is not. We're going to talk about what kingdom business is in a minute. But if you can figure some things that it's not, that'll help you get to the answer to the question of what it is. This is what it is not. <clears throat> I would read that, but it's okay. There we go. I can, get, I can read it from this side. Verse 22 But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his face, natural face in a mirror. 
Verse 24, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and it is not forgetful, and, he, and it, it is not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. What is not kingdom business is coming to a church, hearing God's word, and doing nothing. That is not kingdom business at all. Matter of fact, the Bible says if you come to hear and you don't do, you're deceiving your own selves. And then he goes in, if that's not clear enough, he wrote the other passage in the Bible for me. See, that's pretty plain, right? If you hear and you don't do, and you think you're about kingdom business, you're deceiving yourself. Amen. Watch this. This is what he wrote for Marty. In, in verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer. Okay, so he's fixing to tell you. If you're just here and you're not a doer, here's what you're like. He is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Verse 24. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Now, let me break this down for you. In this time frame, some 2,000 years ago, they did not have Facebook. You could not take your picture on your camera and call it a selfie. You really didn't know what you looked like. Mirrors were scarce. So you would go back to that and, you know, like me, I can look in the mirror and put my glasses on and I can really see a lot of imperfections. Amen. Come on. No amens needed, Dale. <laughs> I can see imperfections. I can see those dimples. I can see those places where maybe I'm misshaven. And, and, and I see all those things that... That don't look that good. Come on. Now, you ladies, don't sit there like you. You don't want to wear makeup. Men don't wear makeup. <laughs> and so in the, in the Bible times, mirrors just weren't something you had laying around all the time, Stacy. They just they weren't on the wall. I mean, you know, I've got a full length in, in, in my office in here. I look good in it when I do this. <laughs> that lasts about 30 seconds, and then it's like, whoo. But what, they would, what he references to, because he knew the scarcity of a mirror that you would go. And you didn't get a chance to look at yourself 450 times a day on Facebook on your profile picture. And so it was like, oh, and you would leave that. And you might not get to see your face again for years. And that's what he said. He said, if you're a hearer. And not a doer, this is what it's like. It's like you go on, you kind of get it, and you leave, and you forget everything. That's what happens if you don't get in God's Word, and you're just a hero, and you don't practice that. You soon forget what, it, what it's supposed to be like. You soon forget God's Word. Because he says you're forgetting what you look like. You have to make application to the Word. Now, Miss... Uh, Elizabeth is a, is a school teacher at the, at the college level. And by the way, she got a promotion. She's over the, was it biology department? M science? Math and science. Oh, she one of them sharp cookies. She got math and science. Not just science, math and science. Uh, over at Mississippi Delta Community College. Well, thank God. God promoting people in the church. Amen? I pray for people to get promotions and, pro and prosperity, right? There it is. So she's a teacher. Now, I'm going to tell off on myself. When I was in school, I, I didn't really do a lot of learning, but man, I've done a lot of memorizing. <laughs> learning is something you put in, you kind of go back to it, it's there later on. Memorizing is, I just got to get through Friday's test. Do you have any students like that? Have you ever taught anybody like that? Oh, yeah, a lot. I'm glad she wasn't my teacher. Do it. <laughs> See, that's kind of the same thing if you're a hearer only and not a doer. See, you're not making an application to what you've heard. And if you don't do that, you'll soon forget it. That is not what kingdom business is, that you hear God's word and you forget and you don't do. That's not kingdom business, according to Scripture. That is not kingdom business. So, to answer the first part of the question, what does kingdom business look like? Well, what it doesn't look like is hearing and not doing. Can I get an amen? Okay, all right. So, next in James 1 27 this is what look there's many things I don't have time today to go or for the next year to go through everything kingdom business is I picked a few kingdom business is this James 1 27 
pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. How many of you understand that that's kingdom business? <laughs> pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. It, it doesn't really get much plainer. It's, my daddy used to say plain English, plainly understood. I get that. Shannon, I get that. This is it, boy. Pay attention. This is it. Oh, I don't have to look for anything. No, this is it. This is it. To visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. That word visit right there means to look upon in time of need to help. That's what that word visit means. It don't mean go by and say, well, bless God. Oh, you ain't got any food. Well, bless God. We're going to pray for you and the Lord's going to bless you with food. Come on. Oh. You got nine cupboards full in your house. No, that means get, go back to the house, get them some green beans out of your can, out of your cupboard, bring them up, and let's feed some folks. Amen. Can I get an amen from somebody? This is kingdom business. I didn't come up with it. I didn't say I like it all. I'm just telling you what it is. Check on our, our widows. Our widows, we have a couple in the church. We got one back here, unfortunately. We got one, glory to God, but he's in heaven. <laughs> he's, he's not disappointed, I can tell you that. Got one up here, glory to God. She's, hallelujah. Look up on, take care of them, watch them. See what's happening. Now, Mr. Bobby, you know, he don't know it, but I spy on Miss Janice all the time. See, I asked him the other day, how's everything going? How's family doing? How's Miss Janice out there, out there trying to do a garden with a tiller with a bad shoulder? I said, why don't you call somebody? Well, I thought I could do it. <laughs> Stubborn. <laughs> we got to wait. <laughs> I heard that. Miss Janice said, amen. <laughs> we got to look in and help. Miss Charlotte's going to need some help. She might need a lawnmower blade. Now, she's pretty stout. Now, you ain't going to whoop her or take her. Or you ain't got to worry about that stuff. But she might need a lawnmower belt changed to some blade sharpened. Might need some uh, weed eating done or something on a hot day. Come on now. This is kingdom business. This is what it is. You go look up the word visit and you figure out what it says. I'm telling you what it is. Look upon with the intent to help. Time of need. We help a lot of our single ladies and moms in here. We try to do what we can with them from all kind of stuff. You know why? We suppose we should. They're not widows technically. But we should help them, right? They're family, aren't they? Well, amen. Amen. So that's one thing that kingdom business is. Watch this. If you're unclear, does the Bible talk about what kingdom business is? In Mark 4, verse 26. I'm going to hurry. I know, I know your kids are getting, getting antsy, antsy, whatever that word is. But it's all right. The kingdom of God is like this. Have you ever heard that? The kingdom of God is like this. You know, there's 18 times the Bible speaks of that. The kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of God is like unto. The kingdom of God is this. There's 18 of those in the Bible. So if you're kind of wondering what is kingdom in us, go look them up. There's 18 of them. Watch this. Here's one of them. Mark 4, 26. The kingdom of God is like. This is kingdom business. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. If he should scatter seed. Did you, did you catch it? The kingdom of God is like this. If a man should... In other words, you should scatter some seed. What is that? That's a form of what? Doing. Do you know you've got to scatter some seed before you get a harvest? Now, I could go over here and I could talk to Shannon. And I could say, Shannon, now, uh, now look, uh, I'm, we're going to be in prayer with you. And we're going to anoint your fields. And you ain't got to plan anything out there. But we're going to pray for our soybean harvest. Shannon's an intelligent guy, and he's going to look at me and say, he is a whack joker right there. <laughs> this guy is nuts. Honey, we ain't never going back to that church, ever. <laughs> you know why? Because he knows you've got to plant something first to get something. Is that right? Isn't it crazy how you can plant one soybean, and you get a whole stalk, it's got 72 pods or whatever it is on it, and they got two and three and four in them? Isn't that crazy? I don't get that. It don't matter whether I get it or not, though. Amen? So the Bible says this. Here's kingdom business. The kingdom of God is this. If a man should scatter seed on the ground, and should, in verse 27, and should sleep by night and rise by day. In other words, you got to till it. you got to take care of it. Once you plant it, you got to rise uh, by day, sleep at night, get you some rest so you can go take care of your sowing. 
You can ask that man over there. If you don't spray it, you're going to have these little old darlings called pigweeds, and they grow up to be uh, up into to, to hogweeds after a while, right? You got to take care of it. You got to water it. You got to you got to you got to take care of it, right? That's what this is referring to. He says, and you should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain of head. Now, what is he saying? You sow, you do your best to till, kingdom business, you, you're busy about the Father's business, you talk to somebody about the Lord, what does that mean? You're talking to somebody about the Lord, then you've got to live it in front of them. You can't backbite. You can't tell them about your affair you're having on your husband or your wife. Come on. You, you, you can't do that. You can't go tell them all these things that are not Christ-like. you got to live. you got to till that ground after you sow that seed. You can't tell them how you went out and, 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 and partook of adult beverages all weekend. And you didn't know where you was at till Sunday night. Well, that's drunkenness. The Bible says that's sin. Amen. 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 Some of y'all. Amen. Amen. We can kind of figure out who voted for the dry county and who didn't. Right, now. right up in the church house. Amen. You've got to till that ground. You've got to work that. You've got to till that soul that you're trying to win to the Lord. You've got to, you've got to present yourself as a, as a, a, a kingdom-minded person. Right? You got to do acts of righteousness. Amen. I got to hurry. So you got to do that. You got to sow. You got to live like you're a Christian. And then when this thing gets ripe, when this harvest gets ripe, you got to lay the sickle to it. You know, there's an opportunity that, that in every person's conversation about the Lord, there's that opportunity where, where you know it's time right now to ask them about whether they know Jesus or not. You ever thought about that? It's right now. And I mean, it's, you know it. It's right now. I got to ask. I got to ask. I got I to gotta ask. And if you don't, you miss it. You know what? The harvest is ready. You don't know what got them to this point, as the scripture says. You don't know what the process is. You just know at that moment, it's time to ask them. You got to be ready. You got to put the sickle in for the harvest. There's the biggest problem with the church. Well, there's two big problems. We don't live it, and we don't, we don't know when to put the sickle in. Come on, give him praise. That was good. That was real good. Just came up with that. Verse 30, then he said, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God? This is a question. Or with what parable shall we picture it? Here's, here's it in. Here's, you want to know what kingdom business is? Here it is. It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown in the ground is smaller than all seeds on earth. It's the smallest seed. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs. And shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. You may think, here's kingdom business. You may think sending a simple card to somebody. Saying, just thinking of you, praying for you. God bless you. Or a text. Something so minor could be the very thing that changes somebody's life. That says, you know what, I can come up out of this thing. Maybe it's a song that we sang this morning, knowing that God is in our Egypt. He stepped in our Egypt with us. It could be multiple things. It could be the smallest thing. It could be a big thing. But it'd be small things. That God says, this is kingdom business. An encouraging word. Uplifting. Just, just something simple. It might mean that you have to actually put uh, some of your plans aside, though. And say, let me go do let me, let me fulfill uh, the chapter, I mean, the verse in Luke where it says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's, uh, we went to Brooke's house one time. She told, she said, Pastor Mark, I, I, I got a leak in my roof. I don't know who to call. Do you know anybody? I said, I don't know a soul in, in, in Hamburg. So we try to, I said, what about this? And we, we trying to figure out what we can do, right? It's raining right down back in our monsoon season here in, in, in the spring. Now, I lump up when I get wet. I mean, just look at it. But she needed some help. I didn't know what to do. I ain't never been on a roof before. No, I'm kidding. 
Sharetta said, what? <laughs> no. I said, well, 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 we'll see what we can do. We gathered up a tart. Bryce and I, we went over there, and it was raining, wasn't it? We was wet when we got done. We didn't know our house was 27 feet off the ground either. <laughs> So we were OSHA approved. We backed my truck up there, got a, a ladder that's on wet metal in the back of a truck, climbed up on it, and I held the ladder, and it's still about that much short, but we got it done. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. We just love people, and we do and do things like that. But if it's on my top ten things, a list of things to do is get on a slick roof when it's raining, and you're going to get wet, that probably ain't in the top ten. So, you know... Lightning, yeah, lightning. Well, you don't have to worry about lightning around Sharetta. She's going to get you down from lightning. <laughs> I'll tell you that later. But see, sometimes you got to go do. Come on now. Some things you got to, sometimes you have to go do. Some things you don't want to do. That's what the Bible says. That's kingdom business. You say, you mean that that's it to get saved? Hey, this is not a works mentality whatsoever. Do not ever, ever, ever mistake your pastor for thinking that you got to work to get to heaven because it has nothing to do with that. It is Jesus Christ died on a cross, shedding his blood, and you asking for forgiveness of your sins, believing in your heart. That's what gets you to heaven. Amen. These other things are byproducts of you saying, I'm so in love with you, Jesus. I'm going to not hear it only, but I'm going to go do. <laughs> if the church would go do... And not just sit in the church and say, Lord, he did really good. I hope so-and-so was here today. They needed that. Jesus' name. If you, could put on a, if you could take a piece of paper and write on the things you've done for God this year, and you don't have anything on that side of the paper, I just want you to know you might be a hearer only. You love me still? Because I love you a whole lot. Because, see, I have to worry about where you're going to come back next week because I preach these messages. And that bothers me if you didn't. I love you, and I want you to know these things. These are things that we should be doing. Look, this is just two or three things. There's many things. In the next few weeks, we're going to unveil some things. That we're going to be some. We're not going to just come to church. We're going to go be the church. Amen. It's time to church. Get outside and do something. Hey, you got that picture? Hunter, you got that picture up? I know this was quick, and I'm going to start calling on some of you to help me because I know what your excuse is now. You didn't call me and, and, and ask me, and I'd helped. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Come on now. No, you would have probably. See that? See, what is that? I don't know either. We're still trying to figure it out. That's, uh, put the wheelchair around. You, because you give. We were able to bless them. This person doesn't even go to our church. Oh, Lord, we did something for somebody that don't go to church. Well, there's a connection here, but they don't. That person don't go to our church. You know what we did? We said, you know what? We're supposed to help. And we became doers. So a couple, two or three of us went over and over and built a wheelchair around. We won't probably ever get any benefit out of that whatsoever. We're not going to go take the lumber up. Right, that's what it means to say. That's what we do between now. He said, I said, we won't get any benefit out of it. He said, you will when you get to heaven. You know what? That's right, because see, this is what you do between the time you get saved and the time you get to heaven. These things are what you do. Amen? You can bless people. Because you give, our church paid for that material. We didn't have to put on a payment plan either. And all of this junk that we're going through, this COVID stuff, God's blessed us. So we did that. God's going to open up doors, I promise you. You just get ready. You, take your, you just say, well, Pastor, I don't know if you, if you know what you're talking about. I'm telling you. You get ready. God's fixing to open up doors. He's going to, there's going to be things that, that we have not even thought about God can do in the midst of his people. So I'm believing for a harvest of souls because here it is, and this is what I, and I'm, gonna, I'm closing right now in a minute. Um, Arvel, will you come up here? Can I use you? <clears throat> Just stand right here. Now, Arvel and I, we've, we've never met. We've never met whatsoever. This is my story. Let me tell. Me and I, we don't know each other. Now, I want you to judge on which way would be better for me to reach Arvel. If he didn't know the Lord, Arvel's a sinner, was a sinner. 
okay? And Arva don't know the Lord. I don't know him. And you, you judge on me which way would be the best for us to get to Arvel's heart so he can come to know Jesus. Here's two scenarios. Here's one. I'm walking down the street. And I'm, hey, buddy, do you know Jesus? Do you know him? Arvel going to say, oh, he's cracked out. <laughs> I'm going to do it, and I'm a preacher. I'm going to say, what? Get, get the kids in the car, get the guns, because this. <laughs> but watch this. Now, uh, James, can I use you? Come right on up here. Now, you're, uh, you're, you're Arvel's neighbor. You're sitting right over here look pretty because you've got to make Arvel look pretty. You're Arvel's neighbor, and, and I say, Jamie, do you know anything we could do for maybe your neighbor? And, 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 you, and you say, you know what? Ar- Arvel needs, a, he needs some steps put on back of his house. They're to fall off. And, and I say, well, well, could you make a contact with him? Because he don't know me. And, and then she goes and she talks to Arvel. And she says, you know what? My church got this little ministry. We want to come bless you with so-and-so. Maybe Arvel doesn't have the ability to do any of that. Maybe he's, he's in a wheelchair. Whatever it might be. He, he don't have that ability. And he says, well, sure. So you're our contact right there. Then I come over and I do something for Arvel. And I, I build him a set of steps. And while I'm building that, I get to know Arvel. And I say, hey, Arvel, uh, hey, where are you at with Jesus? Now, do you think he's going to be more receptive that way? Or if I go up to him and say, do you know Jesus? <laughs> Which one do you think? Second one. You know why? Because, see, that's the principle God put in place. You sow. See, she's been sowing because she's his neighbor. She's been sowing these little seeds. She goes to church every Sunday. And he sees her pack up these kids all by herself and go to church. That's a seed. See, you don't know it. It's that little bitty mustard seed. And she sees on Wednesday night they will come to church. And, and she sees that... He's seeing all these things. She, she don't have a bunch of old parties and crazy stuff going on in her house. Those are seeds. Little seeds that he's sowing. Then there's this time, remember we read it? There's this time of tilling in the process. And we don't know how all that works. That's what the Bible says. We don't know how that seed goes in there and what all that process is to make it come to a head. We don't understand it. And you may be thinking, man, my life is, I just don't see what I'm doing for the Lord. And God said, oh, keep doing it. I'm working on Arvel over there. I'm working on him. And then all of a sudden, he has a need. And then the church says, well, we need to be doers. And we go do. We open up and we crack that door a little bit and say, Arvel, do you know Jesus? And you say, I don't know. But, man, if it's anything like what my neighbor over here has been, if it's what she has, that's what I want. Come on. That's what doing is supposed to do. That's what you live in like a... See, if you come to church and you're a hero and you don't go do at your house, you might not be sowing no seed around your house. So quit expecting a harvest. I have done some uh, sowing and I prayed for some Roundup to come back and kill it. (laughs) Amen. Thank you all. Do you get my point? Hope you got that today. You know I love you, right? I love you so much. Next week, we'll go into part 47 of this same message. Why did I get saved? Hey, be sure to tell Jessica uh, if you want to, uh, if you're going to help uh, with, with our food, di- food distribution on Thursday. What is that? I just, I, just, I just, come on now, just preach the hour. Doing. Doer. <laughs> Amen. Come if you can. We don't need everybody, but look, come if you can. We'd love to have you. We'll have so much fun that you, you'll want to come back again. Amen. Let me bless you as you stand all across this building. Hallelujah.